Nothing is ever simple in science, is it? In 2013, a group of scientists defined the nine hallmarks of aging that are common between all organisms, although they did place an emphasis on mammals. Recently, some scientists have expanded this to be the 12 hallmarks of aging. I'm going to run through all of these. This is going to, by far, be the most in-depth of all my chapters. For my fellow science nerds out there, you're gonna have a wet dream tonight. I will try to break these hallmarks down into individual chapters for those interested. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Lifespan.io for putting together this truly wonderful rejuvenation roadmap. This resource breaks down advancements from several different research institutions and biotechnology companies into their corresponding hallmark of aging. It even tracks how far along the development process is for each of these. If you click on the links, it will take you to a page showing the treatment and progress. As always, I will leave the link in the description below. Genomic instability refers to the tendency of an organism's genetic material, particularly DNA, to change. When genomic instability occurs, it can lead to various genetic changes, including mutations, chromosomal rearrangements, and other alterations that may have implication for an individual's health. There's a number of reasons why genomic instability can occur. Exposure to environmental agents such as radiation or chemicals can lead to errors during DNA replication and repair processes. There's a reason why one should wear sunscreen when out and about. This is an image of someone who was a truck driver for almost 30 years. As you can see, one side of their face is significantly older looking and more wrinkled than the other. Constant ultraviolet radiation to one side of the face led to this genomic instability. There are several types of genomic instability. Chromosomal instability involves large scale changes in the number or structure of a chromosome. In the case of aneuploidy, the addition or loss of whole chromosomes lead to abnormal chromosomal numbers. The addition of an extra copy of chromosome 21 leads to trisomy 21, more commonly known as Down syndrome. In cases where the X chromosome is either partially or wholly missing, the result is Turner syndrome, a condition which leads women to have a short stature, a broad chest and widely spaced nipples. This leads to infertility in many. Another is microsatellite instability, or MSI. Microsatellite instability is a genetic condition characterized by changes in the length of repetitive DNA sequences known as microsatellites. These are also sometimes referred to as short tandem repeats, or SDRs, as they are repeating sequences of one to six base pairs found throughout the genome. These sequences are involved in maintaining genome stability. They play a role in DNA repair and recombination processes such as mismatch repair, homologous recombination, and gene conversion. Mismatch repair, also known as MMR, is a process which functions to correct errors that occur during DNA replication and recombination. The MMR system first identifies DNA mismatches, which are incorrect base pairings, in the DNA double helix. MMR proteins scan the newly synthesized DNA for irregularities. MMR distinguishes between the parental and daughter strands of the DNA. It recognizes that the daughter strand contains the mismatch due to the presence of nicks and flaps. A nick is a single-stranded break in the DNA molecule, which occurs when one of the phosphodiester bonds that connects the nucleotides in one DNA strand is broken. A flap is a single-stranded, unpaired DNA segment that can form when DNA replication errors occur. After identifying the mismatch base or bases, the MMR proteins work together to initiate excision of the erroneous section of DNA. They remove a portion of the newly synthesized strand containing the mismatch. The gap left by the excisation is repaired by a DNA polymerase, which synthesizes a new section of DNA, accurately incorporating the correct bases based on the template provided by the intact complementary strand. 
once the correct DNA sequence is synthesized, DNA ligase seals the nick, joining the newly synthesized DNA to the existing strand. Homologous recombination is initiated in response to double-stranded breaks in the DNA, known as DSBs, which can be caused by various factors, including radiation, chemicals, replication errors, and yes, aging. The cell recognizes the DSB and activates the DNA damage response. The broken DNA ends are processed to create free-end single-stranded DNA, or SSDNA overhangs. These overhangs are coated with a protein called RAD51. The SSDNA overhang with RAD51 are used to search for and find homologous or nearly identical DNA sequences on a sister chromatid or homologous chromosome. The free end overhang invades the homologous sequence, forming a D loop structure. DNA polymerase synthesizes a new DNA strand using the invaded homologous sequence as a template. This process, called DNA strand exchange, results in the restoration of a continuous DNA double helix. The D-loop structure can migrate along the homologous DNA, allowing more extensive exchange of genetic material and facilitating the repair process. As the branch migration progresses, holiday junctions can form, representing a point of exchange between the two DNA molecules. These junctions can be resolved in different ways, ultimately leading to the repair of the DSB. Depending on how the holiday junctions are resolved, the repair process can result in the exchange of genetic material between the two DNA molecules, or it can be resolved without exchange to repair the DSB accurately. In gene conversion, one of the homologous DNA sequences is altered to become identical to the other sequence, while the remaining sequence remains unchanged. Gene conversion typically occurs between two DNA sequences that are highly similar to each other. These sequences may be on different chromosomes or alleles, but they share a common ancestry. Alleles are an alternate form or version of a gene that can occupy a specific locus on a chromosome. Each individual typically has two alleles for each gene, one inherited from each parent. In certain cases, Gene conversion can function as a repair mechanism. When one of the homologous sequences is damaged, gene conversion can replace the damaged sequence with an undamaged copy from the other homologous sequence. Gene conversion can also have medical implications, as it is associated with genetic disorders and disease, particularly when it leads to the non-reciprocal exchange of genetic material between genes that encode proteins. Thus, in some cases, Gene conversion can cause pathogenic mutations. Now moving back to these short tandem repeats, these can be found in non-coding regions of the genome, such as the promoters and untranslated regions or UTRs of genes. Changes in the length of these repeats can affect gene expression and regulation. For example, Variations in the length of microsatellites in promoter regions can influence the binding of transcription factors and, consequently, gene expression. In individuals with these microsatellite instabilities, also known as MSIs, errors in DNA replication or repair mechanisms cause these microsatellite sequences to expand or contract, leading to variations in the number of repeats. MSI can occur in both coding exonic and non-coding intronic regions of the genome. The most common cause of MSI is a malfunction in the DNA mismatch repair system. So how exactly do these mutations cause problems in our body? Well, the exonic sequence of our DNA encodes for proteins. DNA serves as a template for the synthesis of a complementary RNA molecule called messenger RNA. RNA polymerase, an enzyme, reads the DNA template and assembles ribonucleotides to form the growing messenger RNA strand. The messenger RNA molecule serves as a template for protein synthesis. The genetic code, which is written in sets of free nucleotides called codons, specifies the order of amino acids in the protein. Mutations lead to changes in these amino acid sequences, which in turn can lead to non-functioning proteins. There are a few different ways this can occur. 
Point mutations, for example, are small scale changes in the DNA sequence where a single nucleotide is substituted, inserted or deleted. These mutations can lead to alterations in the amino acid sequence of a protein which can impact gene function or protein structure. Point mutations occur in various contexts and have different consequences depending on their location within a gene and the specific change involved. It is important to note that not all single nucleotide mutations are harmful. Due to the degenerate nature of amino acid formation, some triplet combinations can encode for the same amino acid. In silent mutations, this is what occurs, leading to no overall change in the amino acid sequence. These are called silent mutations as they do not interfere with the function of the final protein. Not all mutations are benign, however. In a missense mutation, a single nucleotide change results in the substitution of one amino acid for another in a protein encoded by the gene. Depending on the specific amino acids involved, this can have varying effects on the protein's function. Some missense mutations are benign still, while others can cause diseases and disorders. For example, a missense mutation that converts a positively charged amino acid, such as arginine or lysine, to a negatively charged one, such as aspartic acid or glutamic acid, results in a significant change in the charge of that specific amino acid position within the protein. The change from a positively charged amino acid into a negatively charged one can alter the three-dimensional shape of the protein. Proteins rely on their three-dimensional structure for function. Changes in charge can affect the folding of the protein, potentially leading to misfolding or reduced stability. If the missense mutation leads to a loss of critical protein function, it can have detrimental effects on the biological processes in which the protein is involved. Depending on the specific protein and its role in the cell, this dysfunction can lead to disease or other physiological abnormalities. The amino acid sequence in our DNA is read through the help of what are known as start and stop codons. These serve as signals to start the translation of messenger RNA into a protein by indicating the start of the protein coding region. The most common start codon found in nature is AUG. As the name implies, stop codons signal the termination of this translation process. A nonsense mutation occurs when a point mutation leads to the creation of a premature stop codon in the DNA sequence. These stop codons are UAA, UAG, and UGA. This premature stop codon results in the synthesis of a truncated and often non-functioning protein. Nonsense mutations are typically harmful as they can lead to the loss of critical protein functions. In addition to single nucleotide mutations, there are what are referred to as frameshift mutations. Frameshift mutations occur when an additional base pair is either inserted or deleted, as the base pair sequence is read in groups of three. A change in this way causes the entire sequence to either shift left or shift right down the reading frame. This leads to a completely different triplet code being read, usually changing the amino acid sequence entirely, leading to a non-functional protein structure. There are a few more mutations to talk about, but I think you get the overall message. These mutations are linked to disease. As an organism ages, genomic instability increases, leading to an increased risk of these mutations. This includes an increased risk of cancer, neurodegenerative disease and other age-related disorders. In this way, genomic instability serves as one of the hallmarks of aging. So what exactly can we do to help with this genomic instability? Well, perhaps the most well-known example of a molecule which may aid the ability to repair DNA damage comes in the form of nicotinamide mononucleotides, or NMNs. In fact, you can buy these bloody things as supplements if you're as poor as me, might be a tad outside your budget, however. NMN is a molecule that is closely related to nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, or NAD+, a coenzyme that plays a crucial role in various cellular processes, including energy metabolism and, yes, DNA repair. 
NMN is an intermediate compound in the biosynthesis of NAD+, and is believed to be a precursor that can be used to boost NAD plus levels in the body. In one 2017 study, researchers identified that this metabolite plays a critical role in DNA repair by regulating protein-to-protein -protein interactions. They found that treating mice with NMN boosted the cell's ability to repair DNA damage caused by the aging process. Whether or not this molecule works in humans has not yet been proven, despite all the supplements selling it. At the time of making this video, it is undergoing clinical trials. I'm not a nutritionist, so I would not recommend buying this supplement until we get further information from clinical trials. It's important to make certain that it does not incur any unwanted side effects. At this preliminary stage, however, as NAD plus is found in every cell in the body, it could well play a significant role in tackling the aging process on a holistic organism level. Only time will tell.